In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to share some tips on how to create an effective and meaningful slideshow. In the previous tutorial, we gave you a very poorly designed slideshow to illustrate the kind of things you don't want to do. We're going to give you another variant of that poorly designed slideshow to look at in a moment. This one was created using the slideshow creator inside of PowerDirector. Once we've seen how not to do it again, I'd like to share some tips and then illustrate how to use those in a real situation. So please look at the following video and then we'll get to some of these tips. The first tip, and one which I think we overlook the easiest in designing a slideshow that's really quality, is identify the story you want to tell. Just to document certain people in a certain place at a time using a lot of still images does not necessarily give you a story. Why are they there? Why is what they're doing important or significant or helpful to the viewer? That's a question you have to answer. What is the core of your story? Can you write it in a sentence? Can you say it in a phrase? And that will help you determine how you can build your storyline so that your slideshow has punch and power. Second, tip number two, carefully select the images you want to use. You most likely will have a lot more than you need Select the ones that best tell your particular story. Tip number three, work on each of the images before you bring them into your story. If you have a program like Photo Director or Photoshop or GIMP or any other photo editing software, make sure that your images are the best they can be before you bring them into the project and then it will work out best. And when they're in the project, make sure if the ratio is not matching your project that you crop the images to fit. Tip number four, add music carefully. Make sure that the music that you use enhances the project and doesn't distract from it. Tip number five, use both narration and titles to help the viewer follow your storyline. Sometimes all we do is toss in music and assume that that somehow glues the slideshow together. It does not. And what we need to do is add titles, add some narration, so that we're guiding the thinking of the viewer as they're watching the slideshow so they understand the, the story we're trying to tell. Now let's give you some examples of all of these things. I have on the screen here this slideshow I've designed. It's built of several images. So we're going to start out with I did a title at the beginning. And in the beginning, let me play the first part for you. Okay, we're showing that Israel is a place of contrasts. And so what I've done is I've taken two pictures, one on top of the other. I've used a mask to separate them. I've caused them to come in and I have a title. So now I have something, an idea that I'm putting on the table for people to think about as they follow what's left in the show. And so we're, we move on from here to the first slide. In the first slide, we're going to see a statue of an ancient prophet, but the statue is still, there's no motion to it. So one of the things that I encourage you to do is when you have an image like that, I'm going to click on it and highlight it. Then I'm going to click on the edit button. And in the edit button, I want to go to the pan and zoom tools. 
I could use one of these presets, but I won't. I want to use the Motion Designer. And in this case, I've already made it smaller than you would think when we start out, and I want to focus on what happens above his head here. I'm going to introduce him as someone who fought against false prophets. So I'm going to move my playhead over here, and then we're going to just have it stay there. I'm going to do a plus sign by the diamond, and then it's going to slowly move up about this far, and I'll do another plus sign, and now the camera will move up it will tighten up on his face and slide up to see the sword in his hand. Let's go back to the beginning and play this. And if you look in the upper right corner, you'll see what's going to happen. It starts out there. We see him. We're talking about him. And then it begins to move up. And you say, oh my, he has a sword in his hand. He is a fighting prophet. He's aggressive for the truth. So I'm going to click on OK and my narration that I've designed already, uh, you'll see if that will fit. So oftentimes you can use that kind of element. Now I'm going to show you what happens in another segment here. Let's take this one here. And this one it starts over here. And again, we've used the same tool, the Motion Designer, and we focus on the guy in the surfboard. So I've used that in almost each one of these because I, I am not happy with a still image. I want to have some motion inside the image. It makes it more interesting. And in this case, it does a bit of a reveal and it tells a bit of a story. And so I've also used some very subtle transitions. Between these segments, I have a, a page roll and, and they're in pairs, except for this one here. And when they're in pairs, I've used a simple fade. The other thing I've done is I've got a narration track. It's silenced right now, but that's on track number two. And then I also have a music track, which is basically a slow melodic music tone. And the other thing I've done is I have used a tool called audio ducking on it. So if I widen this track, and turn it on, you're going to see the audio ducking. That when I'm talking, the audio ducks down underneath my voice, and then when I pause, it comes back up. This is the effect of audio ducking. And to do audio ducking on a track, a music track that has narration behind it, you right click, you click on Edit Audio, and you click on Audio Ducking. And then you choose the sensitivity, the ducking level, the fade in and fade out duration in fractions of a second, and click on Apply. I've already done that, but that's a simple way to do that. We have other tutorials on audio ducking here on our channel. So that is very helpful. And when we put all these together, we're going to see a slideshow that tells a story. So I'm going to ask you to look at the following very, very short clip and you'll see the story that we're telling by using some of these techniques. Identify the story, carefully handle the images you want, both in choice and in editing qualities, add music carefully, and use narration and titles to help the, the viewer follow along with you. This is what we've done as a very quick example of using these techniques together. Israel is a land of amazing contrasts. You see an ancient prophet who struck out against the Baal worship of his day. And then you go to the Dead Sea and you see modern technology in the terms of selfies and modern fashion. Or you go to the arid parts where the land is uninhabitable. And then you see a situation along the Mediterranean where the question is, is surf up? see an ancient structure created by the Romans, now used as an amphitheater for modern rock concerts. You see people who reflect the garb of the ancient days, and those who combine ancient and modern 
in their way they get around. So in this abbreviated example, we hope that people got the idea we're talking about contrast between ancient and modern in the state of Israel. If they have that idea, then we've succeeded. We've told a story. We've conveyed a message. If not, we have to revisit what we've done. We hope you find these tools and these ideas useful as you create slideshows in CyberLink PowerDirector for yourself. Mm -hmm.